Hey everyone and welcome to MacTouch Plus. Today I'm going to show you how to free up some space on your hard drive using Daisy Disk. The first thing we need to do is download and install Daisy Disk. To do this, visit daisydiskapp.com. You can download a trial of Daisy Disk from their websites. In addition, you are also able to buy the full application from the Mac App Store or by purchasing a serial number directly from them. Once Daisy Disk has downloaded, open up the DMG file. And then open up the application. It looks like I forgot to drag it to the applications folder first, however Daisy Disk has recognised this and will prompt if you would like to move the app to the apps folder itself. Once Daisy Disk has been moved to the applications folder, it will automatically restart and unmount the DMG automatically. Daisy Disk has only one primary feature, but it does this extremely well. It allows you to analyse the amount of space used on your Mac's hard drive, as well as any other attached storage devices. Like most apps, there is an About panel that you can open by clicking on the menu item and then clicking About Daisy Disk. If you're running the non App Store version of Daisy Disk, you can check for updates using the Daisy Disk menu. Daisy Disk has been designed to be as easy to use as possible, and you can really see this in the Preferences pane. The only real options here are to be notified with a message when you've freed up more than 5GB of space, be notified of any updates, and if you would like to submit an anonymous system profile to help them develop future versions. You can also see what this profile contains if you'd like to make sure your privacy is secure. The rest of the menu items are actually quite indifferent and all of the functions are accessible directly through the Daisy Disk main window. There is a scan button which will allow you to start checking your hard drive for any used space and will also contain a scan as administrator option as well. We'll be looking into that a little bit later. Click scan to start checking your hard drive for the used space and to see if we can save any of this. It can take up to 10 minutes depending on how big your hard drive is and how fast your Mac is. Once Daisy Disk has finished analysing your hard drive, you are presented with what they call a sunburst map on the left hand side and a list of files and folders on the right hand side. This allows Daisy Disk to graphically represent how much space each file and folder is using on your hard drive. The larger the segment on the sunburst map, the more space it's using up in relation to the rest of the files and folders displayed. Let's take a look at our home folder. This resides in the users folder which is showing the largest amount of space used. To access it, simply click the users folder which will show you all the current home folders on the Mac. As you can see, we've only got one folder on there. Whenever we drill down into a subfolder, the sunburst map changes and accommodates the amount of space in these folders. Instead of using the traditional file view on the right hand side, we can actually hover the mouse over the sunburst map. This will show us the large files and folders that are being used and allows us to click on them to select them further. Here we've drilled down into a further folder, and now we can see folders such as pictures, music, movies and downloads. In my pictures library I have an Aperture library there, but I don't have Aperture installed on this Mac. It's actually an old library I no longer need. I can open up the enclosing folder, effectively going back one step.
If I right click on the icon, I can view it in the finder where I can see it uses just over 3 gigabytes. DaisyDisk has a feature called the Collector. This allows you to move items that you may want to remove to a special area that won't delete them but will keep them there in case you do decide to. When you move items to the Collector, it will be displayed on the bottom left hand side of the screen. Since the Collector will always be there whenever you are adding files to it, you can click to expand and see exactly what you've added. You can also remove items from the Collector, keeping them safe from accidental deletion. Another way of navigating to parent folders is by using the breadcrumb trail at the top of the window of DaisyDisk. I'm now going to enter the My Movies folder to see exactly what is using that 2GB of space. As the file names are far too long to appear in the column, hovering the mouse over them will allow it to scroll and display the full file name. Once you're in a folder that has no further folders inside it, the sunburst map will appear and display the files in proportion to how much space they use. So as you can see, that movie file I had there was using most of the space and displaying most of the sunburst map. Although I could go into the finder to open the file, you can actually open files directly from DaisyDisk. So I've just clicked on this trailer, and as you can see, it opens it within Quick Look. This allows you to easily see exactly what these files are. Now I've cleared my movies folder, it's time to clear another folder. I'm going to go into my public folder since the Dropbox in there has over a gigabyte of space which appears to be used by an exe file for Windows. Since the file name denotes it's a demo, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Although I could delete it directly from DaisyDisk, I've again added it to the collector. This allows me to manage the deletion before it happens. And now if I navigate to my documents folder, I can see a temporary file there that is using just over one gigabyte of space. DaisyDisk also displays invisible files, which are either files that have been hidden specifically or that start with a period. As you can see in Finder, there is no .ds store, but this is a file crucial to OS X. As well as right clicking and moving files to the collector, you can simply drag the files down to it as well and you will see a drop area appear. In addition to being able to manage exactly which files you're intending to delete, the collector can give you a good idea of exactly how much space you're freeing up. As we touched upon before, we can use the sunburst map as a navigation tool. The grey areas denote files, whilst the other colour areas denote folders. As you can see, this large grey area is actually a Ubuntu download, I'm not going to need this anymore since I can just re-download it from the internet if necessary. So I can move this to the collector or even go to its enclosing folder. By going to its enclosing folder I can see exactly what else is in this folder and if anything else is taking up some space. As I'm going to remove this I'm going to move it to the collector. Watch what happens to the sunburst map as soon as I do. As you can see, it readjusts automatically to compensate for the extra space being made available. You can even drag directly from the sunburst map down to the collector. The sunburst map will again reproportion itself according to the rest of the space available. When presented with a large number of files and folders, DaisyDisk will automatically generate a colour scheme. So as soon as I go to the Macintosh hard drive, we can see a wide range of colours. Whilst DaisyDisk will allow you to access many of the system files and folders, it is strongly recommended not to use it in any of these. Keep DaisyDisk running in your home folder and, even occasionally, in your applications folder. As you can see, DaisyDisk will make it very easy to see how large some of the applications are that are installed on your Mac. For example, we can see iTunes is a baffling 304 megabytes. 
Whilst Daisy Disk can remove any of these applications just as simply as removing any other files and folders. Ideally, try and remove these directly in the Finder or use an application such as Clean My Mac or App Zapper. Now that I'm happy that all the files that I wish to delete are safely in the collector, I'm going to go ahead and delete these. To do so, use the Action button and then click Remove All Items from Collector. Alternatively, you can simply click the Delete button down near the collector. DaisyDisk offers a useful countdown timer when you empty the collector. This is extremely useful if you realise you've added a file there you really shouldn't have. If you're so inclined, you can tweet exactly how much space you've freed up by using the message that appears in DaisyDisk. Alternatively, click Don't show these messages again. So let's go back to the main Daisy Disk window. If we click on Disks and Folders, this takes us back to the first window we saw. We can also scan our hard drive as an administrator. This will prompt you for your administrator password. It's worth noting at this stage that the Scan as Administrator feature is only available in the non Mac App Store version of Daisy Disk. If you do purchase Daisy Disk from the Mac App Store, you will not have this feature. When you scan as administrator, you are scanning all the files and folders that are available on the computer, not just the ones you have access to. This is useful on a multi-user Mac, where you may find other user accounts that you wouldn't normally have access to are using up tremendous amounts of space. One tip I would recommend is whenever you're looking to free up some space, always scan your home folder first. Rather than scan the entire hard drive and wait a few minutes for that to finish, simply click the Scan Folder button. Scanning a folder narrows down Daisy Disk's scope tremendously, saving it having to scan areas such as the applications and the system folders. As you can see, DataDisk also handles external volumes such as external hard drives and USB sticks. DataDisk allows you to see exactly how much space is being used and how much space is available. You can hover over each of the hard drive icons to determine how much space is available. DataDisk works in exactly the same way on external hard drives as it does on your internal ones. So to scan, just simply click the scan button. And just the same as an internal hard drive, drilling down into various files and folders will reveal what is taking up your space. So if I navigate to the Users folder, I can see my Home folder there, and something that's using 5GB in the Documents folder. I can see this is a Windows 7 Parallels virtual machine. This is something I'm going to keep, so I'm just going to leave it there. Once you've deleted large amounts of data using Daisy Disk, you may need to update the scan results. To do this, click on the drop down menu and select Forget Scan Results. This will force Daisy Disk to do a new complete scan the next time you want to. And that's it, I hope you've learned a lot about DaisyDisk today. If you use DaisyDisk or have any further comments or feedback, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.